my dear friend and past district director, our current webmaster, and our current public relations manager, distinguished Toastmaster Mike McLean. Thank you. It's all just so small. It doesn't all fit. I thought it was because the brain was like <laughs> too big, but no, that's not true either. Thank you. Whoa. Watch out for them. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to 10, maybe 15 minutes of information about what the public relations team and the webmaster, kind of all the same thing, have been doing to help support our district mission. First thing I want to talk about is our social media. We have our Instagram account, we have our YouTube page, we have our Facebook page, we have our LinkedIn page, and we have a Twitter account. All five of those are relatively active at this point. And I went back this morning, and this is year to date on the reach that our Facebook page has gotten. And if you look here, 2,300 odd some page reaches in about four months is how far we're into the year here. I find the spike in August kind of interesting. That's right around the time of International Convention, which is when we posted a little bit more because your entire district trio and it was there for training. And I happened to be there also. So that got a little spike there. And I've made a concentrated effort to be a little more consistent moving into September. And you can see kind of the results of that through September there. So that's the page reach and the number of page visits on our Facebook page. Think about those numbers in a moment, because towards the end of this, I'm going to give you all a present that you can take back to your clubs. The other one that I pulled metrics on doesn't have as much reach, about 60 odd, well, it's about 70, 80 total. You have to add these two lines together. The, the way LinkedIn does it, the dashed yellow line is people who access on mobile, and the solid blue line is people who access from their desktop. Why mobile went down from July 1st to August 1st? Absolutely no clue. That, that was surprising to me when I saw that this morning. I figured any of our social medias would be more popular on mobile than on desktop. But there's still some really good reach there. And the thing is, is to remember that there's different audiences, right? The Facebook audience is different than the LinkedIn audience. And so while the numbers may not match, the LinkedIn reach may actually be more beneficial to a professional Toastmasters club than would a Facebook reach. Okay, Sue, so next slide. So here's the present that I'm going to give you. So for all the area directors, pay attention because my mission to you is to take this information to your clubs because this is, is it's not something we haven't done before. It's just a new way to get to it, a new, easier way to do it. We talked about social media and how it's a powerful way to get in touch with folks. The district has always helped clubs promote events. And what we've done is we've made that easier for the clubs to submit that. So what we're asking is not every club meeting, but club special events. So when your clubs have their club contest or they have an open house, if they get that stuff submitted to us ahead of time, and the ahead of time has to be about at least a week because the, these will all be reviewed by the district trio so that we're making sure that we don't over flood the social media that we're really covering only the special events. And the, the new form here on our toastmastersd84.org website slash social media support. And I think Sue has that page queued up and can switch to it. Who's concentrating. The form is pretty simple. So it's going to, I'll, I'll talk through it while she's bringing it up. It's going to ask, obviously, for the name, the contact information. It's going to ask for the club number and the club name. There will be a text field there where they can type in some description as to what the event is. There will be a spot on there to attach. So if they've used Canva or some other tools to make a flyer to help promote their contest or their open house, that will be there also. So scroll down a little farther, Sue. So there's where they can upload the promotional thing. 
important question here is brand compliance. The form is going to ask the club, have you read our brand manual and our, is your graphic brand compliant, keeping with the Toastmasters brand? Their choice there is yes, or I'll come back and I'll resubmit this. Or I'll submit this later after I've updated my graphic. And that's it. And they submit that. That will come to, like I said, the district trio plus myself. We meet every Sunday morning. So the reviews will happen on Sunday mornings. And then we will get those scheduled. So let your clubs know that great service, right? 2,000 odd some Facebook views, a couple hundred LinkedIn views. Didn't count the Twitter and the Instagram, and the other things. We'll get all of that stuff everywhere when we do it. Just give us enough time to go through the approval and to get it scheduled. The last thing I want to talk about is a couple of the other services that we offer. And Sue, that's back to what is, I believe, my last slide. And the first one I want to talk about is our website. As Vicki mentioned before, our website is not d84.org. Vicki said that enough times earlier this morning that I actually went out and went to see if I could register d84.org and buy that name. <laughs> I can't, D84 is a district or a division of a school district somewhere in some other country. So we can't use that one. So it's important to remember that our webpage is toastmastersd84.org. The other one, and this is really more of an awareness that we probably didn't cover well at the division in the area director training. We have a ton of what I call generic email addresses. And each year what we do is we simply set these email addresses up to forward to a different person. So the example here is division-a at toastmastersd84.org. Today, if you email that, it'll go to Nick Patterson. Last year, if you'd emailed that email address, it would have gone to Amanda Howard. All of the, all, all nine divisions have it. We have not created area ones yet. We could, I just haven't thought that one through yet, but all nine divisions have one, as well as all of the major trio positions and committee chairs. So many of you probably know my email address is mike.mcclain at PO Box. I've never had a problem giving that out, but for this year, it's also PRM at toastmastersd84.org. It's also web, web at toastmastersd84.org. <laughs> There's a variety of different ones there. That's good when you are signing up for something that would be useful after your term. Instead of signing it up as William McCombie's email address, sign up for it as the Division G forwarding address. And that makes it real easy to pass that service on to whoever your successor is next year. Just a reminder that these exist and, and to use them when you can. And then the last resource, a number of the TRIO members have said during the day today, it's on the district calendar. So I just wanted to bring this up again and make sure everyone sees that we have this district calendar. The population of the events on this calendar are done by a whole group of people, including serving double duty, our Zoom moderator and calendar master. Sue Lightoff does most of these entries for us. Every one of these is clickable. You can click on it and can bring up some information about the event. When it's one of the trainings like Vicki covered before, the Zoom links will all be in there and you will be able to see everything going on with that event. So please remember that service is there. It's a good consolidated way to see everything that's happening in the district. And please make sure area directors that your clubs are aware of this also. So that was my report. Thank you very much for letting me serve as your public relations manager this year. Paula.